Hi, I'm Cindy with Choice Medical Group, the Senior Kicks Club. Today we're going to be working on one of our painting projects. This is a little one that I was able to find it online, and that we're calling it the Love Gnome. Obviously, this is our Valentine's Day project. You're going to need your canvas, some paints. The only paints you're really going to need for this are going to be a white, a black, a blue, a little bit of green, and obviously our red. We're going to be able to blend those colors to make the rest. Your paintbrush, and surprisingly enough, a ruler. And that's going to be helping us with these lines here. So we're going to go ahead and get started. The first thing we want to do always is we're going to paint the background white and go from there. And let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we want to get the boarded background in. And as I've showed you in some of our previous videos, and that some of you may know, this is a really easy thing to do using a sponge. The first thing I want to do is get a base coat on here, and that, and I'm going to go ahead and use this little sponge brush and just really quick get a white base on here. Now it doesn't matter if you're using a raised canvas like this and you need to go down to the edges, that's fine. If you're just on a canvas board, which isn't as thick as a framed canvas, that's fine too. And that you won't need to go around the corners. Some of you will not need to go around the corners because you'll actually be putting your project in a separate frame. So it all depends on what you want. On this particular one today, I'm going to So now that we've got the background painted white, I'm going to take my little sponge here because I love working with these sponges. I'm going to cut it down the middle and I'm going to get it moistened here so that it works well. Squeeze out that water. And I'm going to take for this background boards and I'm going to dip this. And I have some paint that I've used a little bit earlier and then I'm going to dip this in white. And then I'm going to dip a little bit on this edge the, where the white was mixed to make a gray. Just a little bit on each side. And I'm going to dab just a tiny bit of black. Dip it in there. Just get just a little tiny bit of black on a couple of corners. And then to make these boards, we'll see if you can do it here. We're going to just take this sponge and just streak it down. Run it back up and run it down. And because we've already got the white in the background there, we know our board's covered. I'm going to dab that in the black and in the gray again a little. A little black, a little gray. And I'm going to streak both sides of this board. It does not have to be beautiful because boards tend to have streaks and things in them that aren't perfect. And as a matter of fact, at some point, if you'd like to take you can put little swirls in there. I'm going to get a little more, get some more streaking going on in here. Again, dab that down. from the top and down so that it's and I'm going to flip this over and do it from the other side too so I don't get that line at the bottom there. We're going to take that over the top and streak down, over the top and streak down. There we have our board. And 
we're going to go ahead and take our dryer and get that dry and we'll do our next step. Okay, so now we've got our background dried a little bit and that you've scuffed a little bit of the, the black and the gray through there so it's given it that smeared look and that we're going to kind of get a guesstimation and use our chalk because it will blend when we use our paints and we're going to get these lines approximated. So we're going to say one, we're going to have one line about here for a board and another approximately here. And at, at the same time, we're going to go ahead and get a rough idea of where our little gnome's going to be. So obviously, we have this set up like this. His nose is almost in the center. And that his hat is kind of over by this part of our board. So let's put a little nose right about here. And from that little nose, we're going to put kind of a smile of his hat over the top. Just like that. And that from that, we're going to make our painting. We want to know that our hat's going to come up about to here, part of it. So I'm going to use that board. I'm going to swing that over. Swing that over. Down to about there. I'm going to take the side of my hat up and in. So we should see the creases of his hat. A little hat here, a little there. So we have his hat now roughed in, his nose roughed in. Gonna get an idea. Down here we have a little bit of a hill of snow, so let's kind of get ourselves a line where that's gonna be and we're going to put his shoes right there on that snow. So we've got that roughed in now, and now we're going to bring his beard in, and that beard is going to be a series of swirls. Okay, your swirls may or may not match up what's going on here. It's perfectly all right if they don't. Now, when we paint over this, a lot of these lines may disappear on you. We'll just fill them in. So that's just kind of a rough out of where we have some of that beard coming down. While we're at it, we see that our board is right here. Yeah, I'm going to get a rough idea of where my branch is. Coming down from the top here. The branch here. Because I want to know where are my hearts going to be. And a nice easy way to figure out how your hearts are going to do is draw a straight line down from that. And then we're going to have another one off this one here. And it's going to come in down. It'll have a little straight line right there. Easier to make the heart that way. Because from our straight line down, you just take, and it gives you a top and a bottom for the heart. And a top and a bottom, I want to make that up a little higher. And it's okay if I've made that a little flat, I can fix it. Hearts are never perfect in shape. There we've got that roughed in. So from there, we're going to go ahead and we're going to get these lines in the background for our boards put in. It's easy and it is not cheating if you want to use a ruler to get those nice and straight. So I'm going to take this and see about how far over that is. Our first line is about two and a half inches in, so at two and a half inches down here. Let me double check that again. And that's two and a quarter. And we're going with about two and a quarter down here. And let's just do a roughed in line here. So for some of you, you're going to want to use your paintbrush. And we'll get a nice thin brush here. And you're going to want to do this in a paint. Some of you are going to say, it's a lot easier on me if I just use a felt tip pen. The felt tip at some point may be a problem that, but this makes it very easy to get our black line laid down. Obviously above my hat, 
comes down. There's no more down here. But I'm going to take and put a little black outline on my hat. And it's okay if this isn't perfect because we're going to go again over this. But this will help you see where I'm at. thin it out a little more than I had it with my chalk here and here. And the reason I can go ahead and do a little outline on his nose with black is because we have all these features around it that are in black. So it's just really kind of helping me show you where things are right now. Ahead and I'm going to get this other board in here. Let's see if we can measure that off a little bit. That's about two inches. You don't have to go too far down. It just kind of comes in here at about two inches. Take it up to that heart and then above the heart. I'm going to take it all the way to the top. I'm not going to worry about that branch. This is just going to kind of help you make the side of your board a little straighter. And we've got that in. Now if you notice also, those hearts are hanging by strings, and we'll get them last. So we're going to work on these first. Again, we're just going to go through and do all of our outlines right now. Don't worry if your lines are not perfect. Again, on these outlines, we are going to go in. We're going to freshen them up at the end. But it's definitely going to help you in the beginnings of these. Okay, our little shoes. I love the big noses and the big feet on gnomes. I think they're absolutely adorable. We're going to do some other gnome projects as we go on through the year. We're going to make some little gnomes. We may even paint some more gnomes because I just think they're wonderful. Okay. And I think I'll start with this outside section of the beard. Give it a big sweep. And again, like I said, don't follow the same exact pattern. Don't worry about it. This beard can change many times in the work on it that we're going to do. We're going to give it that sweeping look. Like he's out in a snowstorm. Let's see, I think I'll bring him down like this. Another 
sweep of his beard down here. Some of you will drag it off the board, others of you will not. You'll have it stop here on the board. It doesn't make any difference. One nice thing about these is they are our projects. And the only one that has to be pleased by them is us. I think I have enough on that little beard. We've got the basics of this. So we're going to start first with our red. And that some items are going to need a shading on them. And in order to get this background to make it really have some depth to it, one of the things that we're going to want to do is do different layers of different colors. I noticed over here, I've left out one of those little hearts that I wanted to make sure was in here. It's going to be coming down here. Again, I'm going to put this little line in here, make my heart off of that, because that's kind of a cute piece. I don't want to make sure that we keep that in there. Okay, so we've gotten that far, and that let's take some of our red. See if I can find a brush there that I was working with before. It's a little wider. Here it is. So uh, this one here is a nice little flat brush. Now yep, I'm going to get some of this red, bring it over here. I'll put a little tiny bit of black in here because I want this to be a really deep red. Now like some of you have, like I said, fancy and much better quality acrylics than others. And I always use just the basic colors, so if you're having a red that's got a fancier name, that's fine. Just understand, I'm just going to call it red, and you use whatever red you have. So for this, I'm just going to go in here, and I'm going to go ahead and start painting my hat. Don't worry that it's Brush strokes are going in any particular direction. We're just getting this darker red in here. And I'm going to have to definitely make some more of it. most important part about this is that we get a nice dark red. Paints, the acrylics always dry a little darker anyway. Hopefully every day we get a little closer to getting be able to get back together and do these again in person. In the meantime, I do enjoy doing these for you. I'm hoping you're enjoying them. This little guy happens to be one that I really have enjoyed. A lot of these things, I find them online. And I'm able to present them to you because they are offered free for us. When they offered this one, I couldn't resist. I'm going to make some more of my red. Darker red. Oops, that might be a bit too much black. I don't want to overdo it. It doesn't take much black to darken your colors. A lot of the professional painters were to look at me, they would say, how do you even possibly mix your colors that way? Well, 
I'm doing it this way because we're all doing this and learning a lot of this ourselves as we go. And some of us are working with different levels of paint, different levels of brushes. And our reason for doing it is because we are enjoying having some time together and helping us to keep ourselves wonderfully occupied with each other in a nice, pleasant, relaxing way. Get these little shoes down here, make sure they get their dose. Acrylics are notoriously a paint that we do in layers. Sometimes we have to dry between layers, sometimes not so much. Let's get all of our little hearts done here. Don't worry about being perfect. Just worry about having a good time. There's very little that we can't go back and fix if we decide we weren't happy with it. I'm going to add a little more of this dark red to up here. As I said, we're not worried about stroke marks or being perfect and that the color matches perfect. Okay, so we've got our red areas kind of done now. I'm going to rinse my brush here. And while that's doing just a little bit of drying, not too much, while it's drying a little, I'm going to come down here going to put a little bit of red off to the side here. And all of us have different palettes, so we'll all be working this differently. And I want kind of a, just a rosy color. So I'm just going to mix a little bit of the red and white, and I'm going to get this nose in here. I think, well, that's kind of dark. Yes, it is. That's all right. <coughs> So again, we're going to layer this. And you know if he's out in the snow, that rose he knows is from being in the cold. And rinse my brush out a little bit again. Okay, so while we're waiting for that to get a little bit more dry, I'm going to put some gray in our mustache. I'm going to load this brush up pretty good. I'm just going to kind of come in here and just sweep a little gray in between some of these areas. Again, don't worry if you cross over the lines. You can put lines in and take lines out as you go. I just want to get color in here and have it be a little bit wet. Put a little bit more in here. And it doesn't have to be the exact gray all the way through. We just want to make sure that we're getting a nice layer in here so that we can build on it for our mustache. And on the strokes on this, we are going to try to keep them kind of sweeping. Like I said, don't worry if you paint over a line. You can go in and fix it. In this case, I even right here had a little bit of paint that wasn't 100% dry. It's quite all right. It just puts a streak in there. And then this beard is not going to be a solid white beard. It's not going to be solid gray beard. It's going to have like hair does. 
by way of going and variations in the color. Okay, so I've got that sweeping. Before it's too dry, I'm going to add a whole lot more white to this. So I'm going to get a really light gray in there now. Add a whole bunch more white here. And I'm not going to mix it real well. I'm just going to start coming in and doing the sweeps of my beard. And again over here, some more sweeps. Don't worry about perfection. Okay, so now we've got some more sweeps into that mustache. We're gonna let that dry a little bit while we work a little bit back up here. I'm gonna take a lot more red, mix it to that dark, because I still have plenty of dark left over. it down in here and we're going to put another layer on that's just a little bit brighter, not near as dark as that last layer. Okay, so we'll just push this in here. Again, don't worry about it being perfect. Don't worry about anything color-wise. We do it too perfectly, we're not going to get that shadowed effect we want. So just brush in some of your colors, a little bit lighter red here now. So we've got some lightness on there. I'm going to go down and I'm going to add a little bit of this light, lighter red in on our hearts. Now, the ones down here on our shoes, the next level when we come up, we're going to make it just a tad higher. As you can see, this one here, I'm not taking it all the way to the bottom. Got a little bit of an area just above because we're going to start to kind of get our shadowed in there, our shadowed area in there. Got that. I'm going to take my brush and rinse it out again. I'm going to go back to that nose. And again, I'm going to take a little bit of my a lighter color here. So I'm going to take some of that white and blend it because I want that a little bit lighter pink for the more top of his nose where the sun's shining down on it a little. And we're going to put that in there. So there we have that we're doing there. I'm going to clear that brush just a little bit because I'm going to take this darker pink here, I think, and try to work it up just a little bit more in here. There we go. That kind of blended that a little better. shadow under his nose, the pink, the lighter pink more at the top here. And now I'm going to take it again, I'm going to go back in here, except this time I'm going to add a lot of white. And I'm going to pull that white down through there. And I'm going to just kind of brush it through. You see, I've already covered up some lines. Don't worry about it. And this white is not going in all completely thick. We're making it kind of rough sweeps. And this is another one of those areas that if you wanted to use a more of a bristle brush, a drier brush, it would be really good. <laughs> 
going to dip this in a little more white because I'm starting to get too much gray mixed in. I want that really bright on top. Nice thing about these paintings is each one of them is done by us as individuals, so none of them are going to be the same. let that dry and I'm going to go back in with a little bit lighter red yet, a more bright red. Okay, but well, let's give that a minute to dry up there real quick and that he's definitely in a windy spot it looks like, a little sideways there. And let's put our little bit of a hillside in here. And I'm going to do a different thing for that. I'm going to take my sponge, and it's damp already. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put in a little bit of a blue background on this. And it's going to be light, and it's not going to be 100%. But if we want to get that hilly, snowy background in there. And I'm just going to dab this in. And it's a mixed, a little bit of blue a little bit of white. It's not perfectly mixed. This is just our little snowy area where he's standing. Most important right now is that we're just doing the bluish with the white in there. Now if you pull too much sideways on your sponge, it ends up making it that smeared board look. And we're not looking for that. We're looking for just the dabbed snowy look. There's our snow. Now I'm going to go in and I'm going to add a lot more white to this. Right over the top of that blue. The snow is never 100% white if you look at it. It's got shadows to it. And those shadows are given that frosty blued look. And if you're worried, you say, oh, I drugged my sponge and it made that different look. It's okay. When you go back over it with this second layer, you're going to be able to give it that frosty look. So now we've given him something to stand on. Well, let's see a little guy. I'm going to rinse out my sponge there so I don't lose the ability to use it again. If you let things dry up, it's tough to get it back out. And now we're going to go back in with that brighter red. And this time I'm not even mixing mine with anything, depending on the reds you're using. We'll make that decision. I'm just going to go in there and sweep in some bright red. Definitely is going to give it some depth. And 
here down here at the bottom when I was talking to you about the shoes we want to make sure that we keep a little bit of that bright red to the top don't take it all the way to the bottom it's going to give you your shadows for the shoes same as on the nose we've been running more pink towards the top of his nose give that shadowed look it off on my paper. And now we're going to go ahead and let's take our hair dryer and give this a little bit of a dry off so that we can finish up on that beard. And then we'll finish up on our branching. Okay, so we've got that dried off pretty good. I'm going to take my brush here and I'm just going to get a little bit of white in here and we're going to start putting in just a little bit of these streaks of his mustache. Again, we were talking about the fact that we we're concerned that we might have gone over some of the lines. It's all right. Those were to give us some guides. We're going to fix it out. We want this part of the hair, though, to be pretty bright. So now we're going to just be brushing in streaks of this. And it's okay if it doesn't cover all the gray because we want that in the background. And not to worry about those black lines because we're going to fix all them too. Don't worry if you're not getting right up next to that mustache. I mean up next to that nose either. These are all areas that we're going to be fixing with our black lines. More important that you get the sweeping effect so that it gives that wind blowing look to our little gnome's beard and mustache. This is where the black lines are going to be more important is when we put them in afterwards. Try to keep your brush a little bit on the dry side with that white. That's why you hear me dabbing it off. I don't want it to be overly thick. Okay, take a step back a little, like take a look, see if your hair is as white as you'd like it. All going where it's supposed to go. I think it is. I'm going to add just a tad more. Definitely want it bright. What do you think? Have we brightened it up enough? Oh, I'm liking that. Okay, so now we've got that look. He's not as bright a white as the last gnome, but that's okay because I still like how he came out. Yours may be darker, it may be lighter, and it's all okay because it's just in what we like right now. Okay, I'm going to get into my black up here, and I'm going to take my liner brush. 
And coming down underneath his hat, I'm going to make sure first I get the sh shadows under there. Bring that down. Everything up here is dry. Get that outline around his nose a little. Because these are areas where the hair shadows are coming down. Just bring them down, flick them out. Start to dark up here. Flick them down. Let the brush just lay down and then flick it up. Giving you that shadowed look. Here on the edge of his hat, I want to make sure I have it good and dark right there because that's that outline of his hat that's going to stand out the most. Bring it down around his nose. Okay, we're going to keep going on this. You're going to be just following again the, the lines of the that you put in there. more of the lines that you put in there are going to be the shapes that you manage to sweep and make them look like the way the hair was flowing. So if you're sweeping this way, make sure you put your lines in this way. If you swept down this way, you'll do that. definitely think I need some more shading up here. So I'm going to bring that down in there a little more. Turn this around. Don't forget, you can move your board around. Sometimes I move mine, sometimes I don't. I'm going to darken this area here. Definitely more shade of shadowing there. Bring this down. See, I can follow that line. you'd like that and outline it. Maybe some of you already know are seeing that I still have chalk on here. What will I do with that chalk? Not a problem. I'm going to simply take a damp brush, paint brush when I'm done, and wipe that right off. You just don't want to take it off while your paint is wet. If you haven't already painted over it, wait for it to dry before you go in with a damp brush and pull that out. I'm going to clean up this right here a little. Bring the brush better to a better chisel. And then right here you notice we have a space that's definitely shadowed. It was not part of his beard. We want to make sure we don't leave that. So we're going to brush around his shoes. And we're going to clean up those edges. Okay. 
And now I want to make sure I get in these lines that are coming down that are showing that we have our hearts hanging from his hat. I'm going to put this in a direction that I can see, hopefully. We can line that up and get that a nice straight line down. doesn't have to be perfect, but we'd like it to be fairly straight. I'm going to outline my little heart again here. Let's get over here and let's get this branch in here. And one of the things that I'm going to do is I'm going to take some green because I don't want it to be a hundred percent dark black. I want it to have kind of a, a green tinge to it, but just fractionally. So we're going to bring it from the top and I'm going to flick my branches down. It's not a solid branch. I'm going to do that all the way down. You might go back in, make it a little heavier like I am. That's all. Making this kind of a little tree branch. off the side and I'm kind of scuffing my brush along and letting it dry out because I want it to have that look of pine needles so I don't want it too heavy in there and now we'll go back to our black Now some of you may find that just doing this with that brush is too much. And just for the sake of those people, I'm going to go ahead and show you how you can just do this. Just like that. Same over here. Just a little bit offset from my branch. Right there. So right through here, I still have a little bit of dampness on this brush, so I'm going to erase right here. right here. You know those little places I told you where if you've got the chalk, don't worry about it. You're going to erase them. So I'm up through here. I've made this a little higher than I wanted it to be. I'm going to try to give it a little bit of that boarded look again over the top. I'm just going to brush that out a little bit because I made my string taller than I wanted it to. So we've basically gotten rid of that. i use that little bit there. Darken it up a little tiny bit over here. Okay, I'm going to rinse that out again and I'm going to erase a little bit more my chalk. Okay. 
kind of handy how that just erases just like that. And we're going to real quick just go around and we're going to outline this when we're done. But while we've got this, let's take a little bit of white and right here on our nose, I'm going to put just a little bit of a highlight. And that's going to show that we've got some sunshine coming down that. And on this over here, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to show a little bit of highlights on the corners of our heart. And the same thing on the top of his little shoes. This is the last of it here. We're just going to go through and we're going to clean up our lines. Black outline on these. Definitely makes it a little crisper. More crisp. those colors out. Bring it down from his hat. This time here on my outline, I'm going to take a little bit of that black and go up just past there because I want this to show that the hat is actually creased in those spots. Just adding the last little bit of some highlights over here. What do you think? I think we need to sign it. And that was fun. I think we could have a good time with this one in many different styles. I love the gnomes. So let's put our signatures on them, hang them on our walls, and enjoy.